Hello, hello. Good evening. How are we all? Welcome back. It's good to see so many of you diving. You see, even before we start, you're here. Although, Discord did not announce the, uh, the stream at all, but there you go. Never mind. Um, <clears throat> welcome. Episode 5 uh, of the Keek Cast. Wearing black today. Now, to be honest with you, Keepy, uh, I've actually got changed. I, I wear red and shorts all day, so I've had a cool shower and... Um, I just put on this and i've got a very cold cooling fan right next to me just to try and keep me cool as well so i'm not i'm not too bad to be fair i'm not sweating i'm not melting uh, and it's a little bit cloudy here as well so temperature is a little bit better <clears throat> how you doing Charvel? uh good evening to you all uh so welcome back to episode five and um we've got a few things to to go through uh a bit a bit more happening this week uh, <laughs> i knew someone was gonna say that i have been waiting for that there's never yeah there's always one <clears throat> yeah it's like it, there's going to be a petition for uh getting uh the, the webcam offline totally so uh <laughs> yeah never mind you got you stuck with it on this one sorry uh but yeah episode five a few things to talk about so let's have a little look see shall we what we've got coming up this week so el gato mm, bringing out some new products yes they are Indeed, they are. Um, there's a few new things that have uh, arrived on the market. Obviously, aimed at the streamer, a uh, content creator uh, environment. Uh, so we'll have a look at those. We've got War Thunder, some classified leaks. Mmm, indeed. Somebody could be getting into very serious trouble with the MOD over this. Uh, we've got the obviously the biggie, which is the Valve Steam Deck. If you've not seen it, you've been living under a rock <coughs> uh, when it comes to PC gaming. Absolutely. Name that. Yes, it's a new feature. Not only is it named the game, but it's also named that something else. Uh, yeah, you say people haven't seen this one yet, but I thought it was a new, new little one <coughs> uh, we'll bring in. I'll give it this week. They are easy. I think they're easy. Both of them are actually easy. Um, anybody with any knows anything about films knows anything about gaming will probably get these quite easily i would have thought but except well except magic she ain't a clue but that's just <laughs> she does, she's only just got into gaming and she's only just got into um uh she doesn't watch many films but there you go uh, uh lotro legendary item revamp leak yes that's uh causing a bit of consternation well if it napper if it was that we'd just call it napper there we go and uh, last but not least for the day would be some more battlefield 2042 details have leaked as well so how you doing timmy good evening to you <laughs> indeed indeed oh dear right so let's hit the refresh so first up el gato bringing three well at least three new products there is a, a technically technically five <laughs> name the like fruit in geeks pocket uh, a walnut uh, is that is that a fruit uh, is that a nut is that what oh hang on is a walnut a seed then or is it classed as a nut oh ah woof. all nuts are seeds all ah, right okay we'll go with that well nuts are seeds um <clears throat> so we're gonna start with El Ghetto new products um there's at least three uh, technically five uh, and we'll go we'll go we'll go through that in a minute as to why um but yes there is uh, a few new ones aimed at streamers aimed at content creators and uh probably productivity for for anyone really that does any kind of uh, creation on this internet so we'll have a look see see what we've got coming up
Right, yes. Uh, we, throw, we showed three there. They were the trailers. Um, definitely not promo, uh, Napa. Definitely not. Um, although I do use some Elgato products uh, myself. Um, so there's three products that they did show there. Um, obviously, the Elgato face cam. Um, that's the, probably the biggie out of all the, the new ones that they're bringing to the market. Uh, I will go through the pricing after I've talked about them because um, uh, a lot of people obviously will look at that and go, hmm. You know, that's nice, but oh shit. Um, it's kind of, uh, it's one of those, you, you kind of got to balance cost against whether you think it's worth it, uh, as with all Elgato uh, items. But we've got the Elgato face cam. Um, pretty much the, the highlight of it is it's 1080p uh, webcam, uh, 60 frames per second, but it's uncompressed. Uh, there's no kind of encoding happening or anything. It's a direct feed straight into it. It's almost like what they've done is they've taken what's... Um, uh the elgato cam link uh which can take a, a, a hdmi output of a, of a camera uh, and, and any kind of camera that can uh, output video uh, and plug it into the face cam and then um plunked it in uh, as a direct link via usb c by the looks of it um to uh, a desktop which is quite handy it makes it very clean very smooth um, so it's one of those, it's got fixed focus, which you, you'll have seen from the video, which if you can set your focal length, uh, mind camera here, obviously it can alter the focal length depending upon what it's actually focusing on. You know, it's focusing on my finger, so it blurs everything behind, you know, that's uh, just cause it's a Sony, um, that does that, the, uh, 6,300. Uh, so that's handy again, it, it, to be fair, my camera is more expensive because it is a, a camera and also it does video 4K as well. So, uh, a bit different. <laughs> so, there we go. Napper's after. Can you, can we buy him a stream deck in <laughs> his birthday in August? <laughs> oh God, I knew I was coming to ask you. Yeah, there's a, there's a kind of an in-joke here that uh, I'm old enough to be Napper's dad, <laughs> which is a bit weird. Um, so, uh, yeah, easy manual control. Obviously, the, the software that you can tie into with the Stream Deck as well, it is handy. Um, you know, the, the, the Stream Deck are a good thing. Um, obviously, the software options via tablets, etc., like uh, Touch Portal, which are also very, very good. Um, I'm not disputing that. A lot of people go for the Stream Deck. I, I have two, two of those. Um, I have the Mini, um, which uh, Hark... Uh, got for me a long long time ago and then magic got me the the larger excel version and they've been an absolute godsend an absolute godsend because everything i do on the geekcast is all through the stream deck i set it up into xsplit broadcaster and then you know so the, it is a good product don't get me wrong uh, and obviously the, for the face cam they're going to be going back to using the camera hub software which is uh, a rather nice little feature um uh, as well so that's that now <laughs> When you look at that as a as a whole product, it does look nice. But you've always got to remember um, that Elgato tax is a thing. Okay, you are paying for the name. You are paying for the not necessarily innovation. Um, it's how they produce a product. They do it to a very high standard. Uh, so there's an Elgato tax. Now, I said when they were kind of teasing this, and I did um, post it onto Twitter that I thought the face cam was going to be a premium. Uh, literally, it was going to be a webcam. I didn't know the name of it was face cam. I knew it was going to have a premium. And I said it was going to be $149.99. I was wrong. It is actually $189.99 in the UK, which I think is quite exceptionally high. Um, I think people might have snapped at it for <clears throat> a lot less just because of the quality of it. Uh, yeah, it's got a Sony sensor. I don't know the actual sensor size. I don't think it's massive, um, but it might be half an inch or something like that. <laughs> there's, a, there's a joke in there somewhere. But um, <clears throat> yeah, 189.99, so 190 quid. Yes, I'm sure there'll be little offers here and there, but Elgato seemingly are very stringent when it comes to the, the pricing of their stuff. It doesn't go on offer for, for um, quite a while. So I wouldn't expect to see that dropping anytime uh, in the next six months or beyond. Um, and that is, to, to my mind, a, a, a bit expensive. <laughs> uh, the other thing that we saw was what's called the Wave Mic Arm. Now, there's two versions of this. I only showed the one video, but there is two versions. Uh, one of those is um, <clears throat> obviously the one that we saw, which is the normal version. Um, 
it's not a bad product uh if i'm honest looking at it uh very thoughtful <clears throat> and i think what people do is they look at all the different kinds i use a uh road micam um for for my uh gear for <clears throat> uh, just simply because it's very very sturdy <clears throat> it is expensive for what it is you're paying brand names etc and the same with this one um it's designed for heavy microphones now we look at some of the microphones on the market such as the blue yeti i know nappy you mentioned it um earlier it is a heavy microphone it is uh, I've, I've still got one um i don't use it anymore but it is a heavy microphone now some of the scissor arms <coughs> can't cope with it literally you'll have the microphone up here and then all of a sudden over time it'll just go do because it can't handle the weight the springs aren't strong enough <coughs> opposite to that you have certain microphones that are very very light they're literally uh the, the, the it's up here all the time is the is the microphone because <clears throat> the scissors around uh the springs are too too uh uh strong so the the way there's got to be a counterbalance <clears throat> now one thing that i can't remember if they did actually show it in that in that uh, video was that on this bit here it's very you can't really see it but but the, the last head bit before the actual ball joint <clears throat> they've actually got a, a counterweight that you can actually clip on so if you have a very light microphone in the shape of the last uh, hinged head bit there you can clip on a counterweight so that it brings down uh, and ba balances with the springs um on, on the arm which i think is a very good idea a lot of, <clears throat> like i say some of the other companies could do with that because it, obviously the, the springs are too strong it starts going all over or conversely if you light in your microphone or whatever you can take the counterweight off so that it sits right which again it's it's revisions of existing products um which i think they're very good at <clears throat> i'm not saying they're always innovate with the products but they always can kind of uh, make better iterations of it and, and that i think is one of the good things they also have cable channels down the back these don't the rear, the road ones don't you get some velcro things but i keep mine out of the way it doesn't bother me it's not like it's in the way if you're one of these streamers or content creators that has the microphone you know in the in your face it's almost like hey this is what i've got i'm advertising it <laughs> i thought it was going to be about ice cream <laughs> yeah um it's it's ideal to keep it a bit more tidier i don't have a problem with mine the cables are generally kept out of the way with the cable ties so that's a possibility the the normal version which uh the, we did show has like plastic trim that you basically pull out lay the cable down and then clip it back in like a seal um and it works you know uh over time obviously rubber tends to be get a little bit grubby um it can attract dust and then you got to keep it clean so that's another thing you got to keep an eye on one thing that um they did do and it would be good actually if road did this <coughs> was they actually include a detachable riser which is about that long i think it's about three or four inches or something like that that you can attach to the base so where the clamp actually fits onto the desk you can then um attach this riser which then lifts up the whole microphone. So basically it's a bit of like aluminium tube that they put in there, strengthened aluminium tube, which you then fit the, uh, the boom arm into. So that helps as well. Again, that's included in the cost. Now there is an, uh, an alternative version to that <coughs> microphone arm, and it's called the Mic Wave Arm LP, which means low profile. So whereas microphone arms sit up quite high uh, because of the shape, this one is actually the opposite so <clears throat> it kind of stays low imagine a um a monitor arm uh, on a like dual monitor setup they're all very low so that they stay on the same horizontal plane well that's what they've done with the, the low profile um there's not a lot of difference between the two the only difference foreseeable that i did see between the two was the channeling was different on on the low profile um they didn't actually uh use the same channel and they used clip in plastic channeling but i think it's because it's it doesn't bend it doesn't have to flex as well so um that's um a couple of differences between the two they're both going to be on sale at the same time and they're both available for the same price now you might say how effing much the wick the wave mic arm not the mic wave arm <laughs> that's happened almost wrong since we've got so many irish people <laughs> mic wave arm okay um is going to be available for 89.99 now i can't remember with the road 
um, boom arm how much this cost because I got it bought for me for um, my sister-in-law to be uh, bought me a couple of Christmas. Oh, did you buy? Oh, oh did she? Oh, right. oh, oh, I'm getting told off now. It was actually magic that got me the arm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know what that is. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So I can't remember the price, but it's it's okay. It looks a very solid unit. Uh, adaptability, like I say, having the counterweight and obviously the hidden cable channels and the detachable riser. The other thing is as well, it has a, um, a ball head here. You can't really see it. Again, it's hidden on this one, which is detachable. It's like a um, three eighths of an inch screw, which does mean you could use it as uh, somewhere for uh, a webcam because obviously a lot of cams have the uh, screw underneath so you could attach it via there so if you wanted to use it as some kind of top-down display for any work that you're doing and you're using um a lavelle mic you know uh people call them lapel mics uh, lavelle mics uh so you don't have to use it as a normal mic you can switch and, and change it around so that's a possibility so there's, there's a bit of an option there like i say 89.99 for that one uh, the last one that you did see as well was um, what's called the Wave XLR. Now, a lot of people um, use microphones that are USB just because they're easy. Headset microphones like what's in these, it, uh, this side. Uh, yeah, this is. I, I never use this one, uh, but yeah, USB. Yeah, okay. Never use it. I just use it as a headset because it's comfortable and it's a back Should we, if, if we ever need it. But um, I use a Rode Procaster. Now, it's an XLR microphone, a direct cable connection. You get a lot better um, sound from them than any kind of USB, um, without a shadow of a doubt. But you need either it powering or it needs a mixer. Now, this is what the Wave XLR is going to be. Um, it's, it's, it's a clever design. The look of it matches the Stream Deck itself. Um, this is where I'm going to get confused because there's obviously there's the Steam Deck and the, the Stream Deck. I remember, there's two different products. Uh, but the, the dial on the front that you saw, which did rotate, um, that's a multifunction. So every time you push it, it changes its function. So what you're going to do. So on its normal setting, you can change the uh, input gain. So how basically how much your microphone's getting picked up. When you click it again, it can adjust to output volume. So basically the loudness, um, uh, what it outputs to your stream, for example. Um, click it again and you can use it as a crossfade so a 50 50 if you want more of a kind of view over your game sound it switches around uh, and then the other button you press it's whether you need phantom power because some microphones need extra power usually 48 volts um, which is quite a significant amount because just for them to be able to pick up sound they need a lot of power putting through now um uh, just going to read that from Keeper from Twitch support just now. We're increasing the number of subscriber badge slots. Can be unlocked starting today. Sub badge slots will become available based on how long you've been a creator. Unlocks begin at year one for affiliates and ten years for partners. Oh, I'll have to have a look at that after after the stream. After we've had a look, and we shall see. But uh, oh, that's good. That's good. We'll see. Sub badge slots. Oh yeah. Oh so oh was that what you paid? All oh, right. See. So Right, yeah, I'm just thinking because the, if, if, the, what you actually paid could be different to what the price is now. Oh, in your orders. Right, okay, Magic's just actually had, uh, had a look and my road uh, boom arm was £90. Obviously, I've had it, what, probably about two years? Two years now. Um, um, <laughs> keep his hoping it was going to be an apology for not putting notifications out. I think it's just Twitch at times. I think what I'm going to have to do is, especially if it doesn't activate um, via Discord and notifications within five minutes, um, I'll do manual ones and then just delete the other ones. So, all right. So yeah, it's on offer. How are you doing, Will? <laughs> Good evening to you, Will. Um, you're late. You, you, hey, don't worry. I'm going to upload it onto um, YouTube so you can watch it later on. But we're only through the. The first part, the first part. I saw you anywhere anyway, but you know, that's fine. How are you anyway? Good evening to you. Um, so just to finish off with this Wave XLR, the, on the top, and it didn't actually show it, I think, well, it might have done actually, there's a mute button, so you tap the top of it and it mutes your microphone. Very clever. The only thing I see is that people might have to stretch to, you know, hit it. 
Now, I've got the Stream Deck XL, I've got the Stream Deck, so I've got my Go XLR, which you would technically replace. Um, but you're getting more and more things on your desk, and I, I, with it being such a large object, I'd be a bit dubious about having that on there. I do like my Go XLR. Um, <clears throat> again, it was a wonderful gift uh, from Hark, and it's been phenomenal. Really has changed up my... Uh, wow, cheers. Oh, thanks very much, Will. Cheers. Do you know what? You can have a, you can have a confetti win in a round of applause. Uh, cheers, Will. Uh, I'm very well, thank you, uh, and I hope you are too. Uh, Will, by the way, is a uh, PR for uh, Rockfish Games, um, so if you want to know anything about Everspace, don't ask him. <laughs> <laughs> only joking, only joking. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's a mute button built into the top of it. That's going to be quite handy. Uh, the XLR connection is at the rear. Sometimes um, some like cloud lifters and things like that, which you use for um uh boosting performance of uh condenser mics etc they have plugs at the front so if you want to keep your cables tidy it um, can be a bit dubious having the cables coming out the front whereas on this one the cable is at the back again just for tidiness uh head jack headphone jack so if you've got a wired headset you can plug straight into there i would use my um uh, for example i would use my other headset which is my bayer dynamic dt 990 pros um a wonderful headset absolutely wonderful um phenomenal sounding compared to these and these are just comfortable these are as comfortable for long sessions and obviously the the, the wired and connected uh, but if you want real good sound uh, something like this but you need power to drive them uh, i think it's they, they recommend i think it's 300 ohms i think of power so that would obviously the wave xlr would be able to um power that no problem and then for the power there's a usb c connector on the back of it as well um <clears throat> For the money, uh, it's not a bad product, actually, uh, for what it's got. Now, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles, maybe, of the Go XLR. Um, obviously, you'll have software. You could set maybe set things up with it. I'm not entirely sure they didn't show any kind of software uh, control. It seemed to be you uh, pushed the button uh, on the front, and that was it. You got your four kind of options. Uh, the Go XLR is different. Obviously, I've got all the different um, sound effects. <laughs> if I want to use them, I can change the four channels to whatever I want as an output or an input. Um, so... Hmm, it's not bad, but money-wise, I think it's quite good if you are looking at upgrading your audio for your system using a, an XLR. Uh, yeah, oh, there is indeed software control. Cheers, keeps. I hadn't, I hadn't seen it when I'd, uh, I'd written this. So, uh, uh, so it, that comes in at one hundred and fifty-nine ninety-nine, which is one hundred and sixty quid, which I think for an XLR mixer um, isn't too bad actually. Um, to be honest with you, out of everything, I think the expensive one is the face cam uh, out of the three big products that they're uh <clears throat> so that all the go xlr mini Ooh. Mm. the thing i like about the go xlr either the mini or the um the the max if you want to say, call it the the normal go xlr is the granular control of the sliders and because you've got four channels there or i think is it two channels that you can do on the mini i can't remember literally if you want to alter four things all at once you can with the go xlr uh, sorry not the go xlr the the wave xlr uh oh there's four on both yeah sorry yeah you, you only get that don't you? you don't get all the other shenanigans on the, you'd have to press the button then turn the dial then press the button turn the dial press the button turn the dial so it take you a lot longer to alter things now admittedly you don't do that too often however there is instances where you might need to quickly mute the uh individual game sound or uh lower your voice chat because somebody's talking about something on discord that you don't really should be broadcast to the internet kind of thing or you find that your system sounds too loud so you know for, like for example if i fire off the confetti win i can drop that down straight away um because it's too loud and then bring it back up if i need to so that to me gives having more sliders is a better option um, whereas I think pushing a button, turning a dial to set, pushing a button and having to keep pressing it would take too long. That, that's my take on it. But like I say, I've been using the Go XLR for a little bit longer. Uh, but I think price wise, uh, I don't know what the retail is currently on the um, XLR Mini uh, currently. If anybody can have a look on it on Amazon, uh, for example, um, it might be say 199 say 250 i'm not entirely sure um because to be fair go xlrs were, have always been expensive um 
But yeah, the Go XLR Mini might be still half the price, if not less, something like that. Um, it's 160 quid, is it? All right, so that's comparative now for the Mini. Now, if I'm honest, if I was integrating everything into a Elgato system uh, for audio, then yeah, it'd be nice maybe to keep everything Elgato and it'd look all fancy schmancy. Um, the other thing that the, they have with the, and it is a, it's a good thing for the Wave XLR, and it showed it in the video, was the uh, anti-clip. So basically the clip guard that they have. So if you start really, really shouting um, into your microphone, it's going to stop it from clipping. Basically, it won't peak too high. Eric would, uh, Eric would be good for one of these. <laughs> <laughs> so when it when he gets too excited and it starts clipping his uh, his uh, his uh, voice, yeah, three hundred eighteen. Yeah, so the 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 normal Go XL has retail at three hundred eighteen, so it's twice the price. Uh, that has come down in price, to be fair, because it was over. I think it was four hundred pounds on launch. Yeah, because uh, current prices obviously all vary uh, in compared to what they they were. But um, yeah, I, I prefer the uh, the granular approach of being able to control the sliders. Even when I do my normal streaming, if I'm coming through the intro and then the game sound, I can slowly filter that in um, with the slider. You could do that if you're prepared as long as you push the button and you're on the right PC game mix kind of thing. So yeah, um, mm, it's it's hard to choose. A lot of people will go for the Elgato uh, just because it's Elgato. But again, it's uh, I do prefer the Go XLR uh, out of that. So, um, but yeah, I think they're both going to be good products. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> I, I like I said, I know more about the Go XLR, either the Mini or the Large, than the Elgato. But I just know that Elgato, it's a bit like Apple or Elgato, generally, it just works. You don't have to worry about it. I've had very few issues with my Stream Deck. Out of everything, out of Elgato that I've had the issues with, it's been my key lights. Just of late, they would not stay connected, uh, and I've had an issue. And then, touch wood, um, they've been working perfect the past three days. <laughs> Bonkers. Uh, one thing that they didn't show, um, and it is the upgrade to, and this this might be for Napper actually, if he's interested in a stream deck. They're bringing out a version two. Um, now, so you, your normal size stream deck is like fifteen buttons. It's three rows of five. Um, this one's going to be the same, and the larger stream deck the xl has a molded um stand basically it's like a, a lightweight molded stand that's built into it. it just clips on um the original stream deck has like a, a little fold out stand so you can change it to whatever height you like etc it doesn't look a swish but it's it's a cheaper option now what they're doing is they're combining basically the, the molded stand onto a new version of the stream deck um not a lot of change really going to be similar detachable cable um for power uh it's be a usb etc and now they're doing swappable face plates so basically um the surrounds of your buttons are going to be basically swappable yeah yeah <clears throat> that's the one yeah so the elgato stream deck v mark ii um what's uh what price do they say for it because i didn't actually get the price on that uh, i all, all i'd had was um um that it was mentioned uh that it was happening 140 quid now i think that is expensive because <laughs> and even on the video um when i did, did actually watch it about showing all the swapping face plates and everything uh for a 15 button um peripheral essentially um although they're very good i think the charging elgato tax there it's like hey it's exactly the same but you can change the face plates how often are you going to change it? You're going to do it maybe once, twice, three times a lady. Um, well, that'd be it. Uh, so I think that's Elgato tax on that one. Um, new stand, detachable power plug, swappable face plates. And somebody did put it in the comments, and this is what we just got back to uh, on the YouTube video, that all of a sudden the Mark 1s are going to be, you know, a lot of them going cheap and everybody's going to be buying them. Because they'll be like, well, why should I buy the Mark II? 
yeah i think once i think what you'll find is the mark one will start to drop in price because they'll stop producing it um <clears throat> if you go to say amazon or other sellers people will be selling them <laughs> exactly napper exactly now the, the reason it's come about and this is what i said earlier about the they tend to iterate rather than innovate because there's a guy in uh, and i follow him on twitter there's a guy in i think he's australia he's been doing detachable like clip-on face plates uh that he 3d prints and he's been doing them for a while and he in his response I think, is either australia or south africa i can't remember uh, and, and he was like, yeah, thanks, Elgato. Mm, you know, you've obviously... <clears throat> um, they've kind of, I don't know, um, just looked at it and gone, hmm, that's nice. We'll do that. Oh, yeah, we'll do it. We can integrate it because we just make them. Now, if you could make one that said Geekbyte on it, yeah, great. <clears throat> or I could just get a bit of white tape and then write Geekbyte on it, you know, because you're not going to look at it that often. Yeah, I mean, I know I look at it to, to change scenes and stuff like that, but you're not going to look at it that often. So I think it's an expensive thing. I'm not entirely convinced it's it's worth the, the money. Um, like I say, I've been very lucky um, with being gifted and bought the the two that I've got, the Mini and the, the, the Max, the XL because especially when I have all my soundboard on, on the Max, on the XL, it's bloody marvellous. <clears throat> uh, that's coming from the US and can't be delivered to a Northern Ireland. Yeah, there's always something weird with Northern Ireland with deliveries, and I don't. I think it's getting worse with the Brexit um, issue, but I know it's been uh, it's been happening for a while. But um, yeah, so that's Elgato new products. Well, that took a little bit longer than I expected, actually. Um, so yeah few new things like say five new items pretty much uh, out there some things probably not priced right but they're hoping people are just going to dive in and grab it yeah if you want a face cam 190 quid the micam i think is decent value for which is uh, adaptability I, I would prefer the wave micam rather than the low profile one um and then um the wave xlr it's okay um very sleek very nice looking but i just don't like the fact that you have to push the button turn the dial push the button turn the dial just to get everything so uh <clears throat> all right due to air pressure mm, fair enough yeah fair enough uh so yeah that's el gato the new products that they've got uh inbound uh and, well they've been released now anyway so next up <clears throat> and it is a quite funny one this one well funny for, for us looking inwards whereas the people involved maybe not so much uh war thunder classified leaks yes uh, pretty much, um, War Thunder, obviously, you know, is a, a military kind of third person game. You know, I think it's Gan, uh, Genji Entertainment or whatever that, that create it. Very popular online, uh, a bit like World of Warplanes, World of Tanks, kind of all mixed in everything else. Well, there's one particular, um, tank in the game and it's the challenger 2 tank which is the basically it's the main battle tank for the british army uh, and it's been in operation since i think 1994 uh and it's been used all over the world um well when they launched it uh, a, a little while back it was quite an extensive big thread that turned up on the war thunder forums and one particular person basically said you've got it wrong you have got it wrong um you're saying it's more vulnerable than it actually is and they went on quite an extensive um discussion about why it was wrong well this person seemingly um had access to a classified manual of the challenger 2 now the reason being is they actually said that they were uh they claimed to be a real life challenger 2 tank commander and a former member of the British Army's Armoured Trials and Development Unit. And he basically was not happy with how it was um, portrayed in the game. Um, and he actually took images from this manual and posted them into this forum thread uh, and said, look, this is, you know, what happens. This is it. He redacted a lot of things uh, and did literally, uh, you know, so this is classified this is classified and this 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 and this well obviously uh the people um the moderators and that stepped in and just said whoa, whoa, whoa hang on you know you've 
we, we kind of need to check this out. We know obviously you're very passionate about this, you, you know, blah, blah, blah. But um, we need to basically get in touch with um, the various authorities and just find this out whether this is legitimate because this would get us in a whole world of hurt. Well, it turns out it is. It's legit. They actually contacted the Ministry of Defence here in the UK and showed them the pictures of the images, uh, the pictures that they got of the manual, etc. And they said, yes, we can confirm that is legitimate. However, <laughs> under the um, Official Secrets Act, none of that should be seen by anyone. And whoever it is, is in the shit. Um, they've done a few IP checks, etc., on where he's posted from. And this person is actually from the area where the main um trials and development unit is so their ip matches around the area so it does act, actually give some credence to his basically saying i know what i'm talking about i've been part of this <laughs> i know he didn't even hide i know now to be fair he's probably it's looking from outside looking in he seems like he's got obviously a passion for tanks he obviously he's very engrossed in it he's took umbrage with this thing uh this design fault uh have how they're more susceptible under fire yes it's a game and i think he's maybe taking it too far he won't necessarily understand how to use a vpn and thinking mm, i shouldn't do that now he did like I say he redacted certain things he you know put classified and they even said that that's officially from a classified document but those classified markings and redacted markings are not actually uh legit so obviously it seems like they've done it or he's done it or, you know, uh, whoever it is uh, and scribble bits out. But they said, basically, you shouldn't have access to that. It shouldn't be seen on a public forum or anything like that. Uh, but they can't, they can't clarify uh, who he actually is. They, there's no way of knowing that they can tell unless he's got some payment tied in with his forum account or anything like that. Because obviously it's a kind of a, a pay to play kind of game um now his problem is if he does get found out he could face up to 14 years in prison for breaking the official Se official secrets act so he's got to hope they don't find out because a he's going to be out of a job um and he's going to be thrown in the slammer <laughs> that's for the american people sorry um so i actually thought it was such a fascinating read to to, to see and you you did see some of the images but obviously it was very very blurred out and obviously it got taken down very very quickly but yeah <laughs> why would you do it because it, it was actually the, the the official document name is the challenger 2 army equipment support publication which is basically the tanks user manual. So when you get into it, that's what you get given and say, right, work that out. So you're there flicking through the manual. Right, hang on, just bear with me. I'm just reading how to steer this thing. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I can imagine it's like this thick, you know, it's like, you know, bulky as hell. There's probably like, this is how you start it. <laughs> this is how you turn left. Yeah, yeah. It's none of this, you know, remote fob. <laughs> Let's start it. Or fingerprint stuff, you know. I don't think of that. But yeah, he's he, whoever he is, and I am presuming it's a he, uh, he's going to be in the shit big time. So, yeah. Uh, passion for tanks is one thing. He doesn't have the mental capacity to be in an official secret position because you should know not to post something so sensitive. It is true, but uh, <clears throat> Megalo for one thousand on how to change the oil. Exactly, yeah, Megalo. I could actually uh, believe that well and truly. Yeah, don't use this type of oil. <laughs> yeah, don't use chip, chip oil, you know. <laughs> Pouring a pouring a bit big. Yeah, I've got 25 litres of this chip oil. There you go. Will that work? <laughs> why, why is the tank not running? Don't know. It was that, maybe it was that dodgy. Yeah, I don't know. You know that air freshener we put in. <laughs> maybe that stopped working. They didn't put it in windscreen washing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, he, he's in trouble, whoever he is. Uh, so word to the wise, uh, don't uh, leak classified documents about uh, a real life tank. Mm. Right, next up then. Next up, let's see, let's see. What have we got up? Come on, come on. What, there we go. Valve, Steam Deck. Oh, yes. This is the biggie. Let's just let's, 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 let's go on a pre sale So there. We're going to move this over. Woo! That's not what I want to get off. Blood of Azog. What are you doing, Bin Background? Go away. Go away. Go away. Right. There we go. Let me just refresh that because it always does that weird thing. Right. If you don't know what the Steam Deck is, uh, you've kind of missed out. The new handheld uh, device from Valve, pretty much um, 
something Valve have been working on for a while. You can obviously tell um, the designs that they've been doing uh, are pretty much phenomenal, really. Now, you might think, oh, well, you don't need it. You've got a Nintendo Switch. Now, to be fair, yes, Nintendo Switches are good if you like Nintendo products. If you want to play um, Mario, if you want to play um, Link games, Breath of the Wild, that kind of thing, fantastic. Dock it, yeah, play it on your big screen. As long as you like Nintendo games. Obviously, the Steam Deck is by Valve. Valve on Steam. So pretty much, I'd say a lot. I'm not going to give you an exact percentage because I don't exactly know. But a lot of games in your Steam library as PC gamers are going to be able to run on this device. Now, we'll have a look at the specs these are obviously uh, official specs of, you know, it's what they've released for, for the thing. It's CPU is an AMD Zen 2 architecture, 4 core, 8 thread. Pretty uh, normal, maybe not the high spec, 2.4 to 3.5 gig. The reason that it's not too high um, um, <coughs> spec wise is A, because of battery life and heat. Uh, we know this, you know, handhelds, any handheld device, uh, if it gets too hot, battery life decreases, you know, that kind of thing. So, You've got to kind of balance longevity, and it is the thing that they, they have struggled with. Every handheld has the same problem. The GPU, which is uh, the AMD RN DNA 2, so, you know, it's a decent GPU. You're looking at uh, decent level graphics uh, from 1 to 1.6 gigahertz. Um, again, GPU clock speed is obviously a little bit weird because, you know, you, you look at AMD, you look at NVIDIA, they're always a, a bit of a... Uh, oh, we've got like 2 gigahertz, 2.1 gigahertz. But yeah, uh, you know, how many compute units, you know, how, what chips uh, set else has it got on there? So the, it's, it's always a bit different uh, between the two manufacturers. But it is running AMD. Uh, have you noticed AMD seem to corner the console market? They always seem to console, you know, your Xbox Series X, AMD. PlayStation 5, AMD. The um, Steam Deck, AMD. I don't know what it runs in the um, the Switch, but I'm presuming it's AMD as well. So, uh, but we'll see. 16 gig of uh, low profile DDR5, um, which very nice. You know, most people in desktops are only running DDR4. Um, the storage. Now, this is where the pricing difference comes in uh, with regards to the storage. Um, 64 gig, which is the most basic version. Um, then you have a 256 NVMe, and then you have a 512 uh, NVMe uh, SSD. Uh, again, this, this, these are the different versions. Everything else is the same apart from the storage. 7-inch touchscreen. Yeah, not massive, but it's a decent size. Uh, 1280 by 800, so it's basically running 720p. Uh, 60 hertz refresh rate, which I think is fine. You know, most people can't tell the difference between 60 and 120 anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, audio, you've got your stereo speakers. 3.5mm jack, dual mix, USB Type-C and Bluetooth. Wi-Fi connectivity, Bluetooth, USB Type-C with DisplayPort 1.4, which is quite handy. Um, battery is 40 watts per hour, and then that's the size as well. The weight's not too bad, 1.4 pounds, so it's a, it's a decent weight. Um, but it, uh, for, for everybody in the metric system, 669 grams. Uh, keeps you well I'm a fan of Linux, uh, sorry, Linux, Linux becoming a mainstream for gaming. People know me, know this, but at the same time, Valve tried this before with the Steam machine, but did that even get to launch? And most people don't play the Switch on the go either, so portability at this size isn't really relevant. Um, it's a space saver. It's cheap compared to a comparable laptop, but I'd rather be big enough for that. So I'm not my Steam games in my bed like I do with my Switch. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, there's going to be a lot of games where you can play them, um, obviously mobile. It's not going to suit every game. It's not going to, definitely isn't going to suit every game. Now, uh, <clears throat> Yeah, 60 hertz. I don't think it's too bad. Like I say, 60 hertz isn't too bad because you've got you've got to look at the hardware that's inside. Um, you're not going to get a GPU that can output 144 hertz at uh, 720 or higher. Um, that's not going to eat, eat battery power and generate so much heat. It's, it's just not there at the moment. All the systems you could do that with and literally... We're kind of getting diminishing returns as we get through the different uh, generations now. Um, yeah, I, but I, I will guarantee Napa 60, 60 FPS 
and and this has been tested by some you know obviously other podcasters tech people um you're not going to notice the difference between 60 and 144 i have 144 hertz monitor uh yeah i notice it when it's smoother but most of that's down to g-sync anyway so as long as it can maintain it that's what you want you want more you want smoother um frame latency so it's not like smooth smooth oh big spike smooth smooth spike, big spike you want it smooth all the way along um it might be like oh i can run 144 hertz but my frame latency is up and down like this if it's taking too long to render that frame you can have 144 hertz screen but it can't maintain it and this is what it's about it's, it's trying to maintain that 144 hertz um so 60 hertz i think is going to be good uh <clears throat> i did want to play a siege yeah so that's the the basically the layout um you'll see it in the background as well people have had hands on but that is going to be the basic layout it does look a bit weird um <clears throat> on the top um etc because obviously you think hang on i've got everything on, on there but you've also got track pads you've got thumbsticks you've got the start a b c d pads so but people have said when they've actually held it in the hand it does feel natural um so that's always a good thing uh flip side underneath you've got more buttons yeah you've got l4 l5 r5 you know so they've taken some thought there you've got the shoulder buttons as well in the top image um which you know is quite nice l1 l2 you've got the volume headphone jack there's a fan there obviously to keep it cool because obviously there is a heat issue going on power buttons etc uh but yeah the the pads underneath are a bit of a game changer. but uh, i know some people use the uh elite um controller for like xbox you know obviously this is an xbox controller but underneath on the elite version there's um like finger buttons there as well um but <clears throat> i think they've looked at that and thought "Ooh, um yeah there is track pads on on the on the thingy as well um the one thing that isn't really shown is that the it's got a built-in gyroscope so for example if you're playing a game and you've got it in your hand if you move the screen like this the game moves around so if you go like this it'll rotate your viewpoint so that's not bad it's with a built-in gyroscope as well <clears throat> um so yeah there we go that's just a bit more in depth when it comes to uh everything that's on it speeds and feeds um yeah the low power as you can see the very low power uh for the apu which is 4 to 15 watts <clears throat> uh, very well thanks uh yeah keepy we we, we we kind of get in the gist that you that you're not a lover of this <laughs> just from the discord as well <laughs> but i think it's gonna be good yeah as mentioned actually at the bottom here that it's um it's six axis imu so that's not, not bad actually i think it's gonna be quite good pressure sensitive uh for the um controllers as well um and then um doesn't look bad uh, there's the display 1610 um ips lcd for, for enhancer now that's quite good with it being an ips um because that's a better um image quality the grays and everything are going to be a lot uh, a lot nicer um so yeah it needs touch screen as well the the touch screen uh so rather than you know having to use the track pads you can type on the screen by tapping it so any kind of game that does have like icons i mean i'm going to use lord of the rings here because i i said um <clears throat> it's going to be an interesting one to try and play something like lord of the rings online because obviously you can use that via steam uh you can log into your account via steam that how would you use that for firing off your skills because obviously point and click mouse clicks etc is going to be very difficult but obviously touch screen if you could read the icons that's the thing <laughs> i can't see what i'm hitting but you know there's not going to be every every game compatible they have said as well that some of the top top games which obviously use multiplayer online anti-cheats that currently won't work because um there's issues but they said they have said they are going to work with um other uh other creators of the of the games to try and get it to work so fingers crossed that that's what they'll do now i'm just going to get down to the bottom here expansion uh so the bottom of the expansion there's a micro sd which is uh basically if you want to expand your storage you can obviously depending on which version you get uh and also you could load in games from there as well so if you want to put the storage uh instead of having it connected up via you know USB C or whatever uh install it via um uh, a new uh game you know put it onto the usb uh 
uh, my, sorry, micro SD, not the USB, micro SD, and then slot it in uh, and hand, enhance your storage from there. You can play it, I believe, from there as well. Uh, so that's going to be quite handy. The other thing as well, uh, which is going to come in with the dock, the dock is going to be sold separately um, later down the line. Yeah, it says there, external connectivity for controllers and devices, or, sorry, displays. USB-C with display for one, display port 1.4. Alternative mode support up to 8K at 60 hertz or 4K at 120 hertz USB 3.2 Gen 2. Um, now this is, like I say, this is where the dock comes in. It's a bit like the Switch. You could dock it there and then play it on a bigger screen. So there's that option there with up to 4K at 120 hertz. Now I'm not saying it's going to start playing um, something along the lines of you know Warzone or anything like that at 120 hertz at 4K not going to happen but there's a possibility if you need to output it again if you're a pc gamer you've never had this option really up to now of playing portable pc games now you could be saying well you're not playing a pc game well you are technically because you're just basically logging into your steam account so um you're playing pc games that maybe aren't available on handheld or other devices it'd be like having um like obviously the sony vita yeah we know how that went um that was a bit shit but you could play sony games but then you couldn't access all the games on your sony account you had to buy this separate ca cartridges you had to say buy their version whereas this you don't you basically almost emulating your steam library into this so i i think it's got potential uh i'm hoping it has anyway um but well, there we go just that's the size and the weight again again not too massive it's it is likely to change they haven't um finalized every detail on it yet um, and it uses Steam operating system um, and then uses the desktop KDE Plasma. So that must be their version. Uh, now, there's one thing a lot of people have said um, that you can, if you completely hate Steam operating system, you could just install Windows on it. You could just completely wipe it and put Windows on it. I'm not saying that's the best thing to do, but there is that option. Um, so... Who knows? Who knows? Uh, and then that's the dock. So eventually that's going to be made available. I think that's almost going to be uh, an essential purchase, really. If you, say, have a TV in the bedroom and then you've got a dock there and then on an evening you could plonk it into the dock and play games via that or whatever, however you want to do it, because it's got Ethernet. Because I hate wireless gaming. It annoys me that there's, you know, I much prefer a relatively constant ping connection speed, etc. I don't mind having a wire connected, you know, apart from headsets. <clears throat> oh, yes, yeah, the SSD that's in it, yeah, you, you will be able to open it, um, but uh, not really advisable, as you've said. Uh, so, yeah, USB-C to Stream Deck, obviously, that's how you're going to connect it. Uh, display port output, HDMI output, the power in via the USB-C, there's the Ethernet, and then there's a 3.1 USB and then two USB-2s quite handy uh fairly lightweight not massive um and a pass through for that as well now this is the uk pricing it's going to vary wherever you are in the world i'm not going to say what your pricing is but it's going to be fairly similar so these are the options that uh, <clears throat> uh are going to be coming um are going to be available so the basic version which is emmc internal storage which is basically old memory but it's 64 gig and the carry case is going to cost you 349.99 well 349 quid uh if you upgrade to a 256 uh, ssd with a uh, carry case and exclusive steam community profile bundle uh it's 459 or if you want to go the whole hog uh which is the uh 512 gig nvme storage um premium anti-glare etched glass exclusive carry case the bundle and then a virtual keyboard theme uh, again the last two are fluff at the end of the day so pretty much now i've pre-ordered and i've pre-ordered the 512 gigabyte version um the the pre-order was like four pounds you can at any point stop that when they're getting close to production um they're gonna basically ask for the rest of the money and then it's gonna get delivered and it's looking like most of them are gonna be coming uh second quarter next year so 2022 um but the reason I went with the higher version, A, obviously this the size, 512 gig. You put 10 games on a on a, 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 a any kind of storage now, and you're going to be filling it up. Most games can be anything from 20, 30. I mean, you've seen what Warzone's like. I mean, that's just bonkers uh, in the size. 
Uh, <laughs> glad to see my summon is going, is going into this. <laughs> Trust me, Napa. I don't use that for that. No way. No way. Um, so, yeah, it's um, going to be the control. Uh, sorry, the uh, 5112 um, MVME. I, what I did like was the anti glare because there's nothing worse than when you look at a screen and you can't see shit because it's, something's glaring on it. So the anti-glare. I'm surprised, to be fair, that that isn't on all of them. Um, I would have thought that would be a standard version across the board, um, you know, because there'd be nothing worse than anybody who can only get the to the 64 gig version, look at it and go, Jesus, I can't see the screen. You know, whether you've got 64 gig or 512, you should have, for me, uh, anti-glare X gas. Uh, gas, glass, wow. Uh, they do claim that the hardware... <laughs> but very good tom very good i like that yeah the new links they do claim that the hardware aside from storage is effectively the same there'll be no performance difference i suspect the higher version though with the better storage will be slightly better for me so it probably will be pci with it being amd i'd be very surprised if it isn't uh but to be fair it doesn't need to be pci express 4 uh <laughs> yeah the light and the magnifier and everything yeah <laughs> um but yeah it doesn't need to be pci express 4 because it's obviously most systems, even now, like uh, Magic's got a 3070 in air AMD system. It's only PCI uh, Express Gen 3. I'm only running PCI Express Gen 3. You will not uh, fill that Express lanes up. You can't. It, it physically won't. If you're running several cores, you know, multi-threaded cores at once and a graphics card and it was multi-threaded to a game, yes, you're going to fill up the PCI Express lanes, but you're not. Uh, even with three, we don't fill that up to the max. So I don't think that's much of a problem if it's PCI Express 3. Um, Express 4, yeah, great, but not necessarily uh, a good thing. But it depends what AMD have done in the specification. But that's what we're going to get. Um, the current availability is, and this is the current, the 64 gig version is looking at quarter one, 2022. So you're going to be any time from, say, January to March-ish uh april the others the 256 and the 512 is looking at quarter two so 2022 so you're going to be looking at say april to say july ish ish um but yeah pre-orders are there available it was a pain in the ass to get because everybody was hammering it they've sold significant numbers they have really well pre-orders anyway uh and just a heads up about the um the scalpers because there's been people that have got the pre-orders um and people have gone mm, yeah I'll, I'll have some of that and they pay an extortionate prices because they couldn't get uh, a pre-order now ebay have actually been in touch because somebody did a bit of an investigation and said um hang on what's going on uh should this be allowed uh <clears throat> uh oh so pci gen 3 times four yeah it's an x4 um normally if uh, each slot can be x 2x4 or x8 uh, x4 like i say is fine so it's pci gen 3 x4 oh okay that's fine like i say you're not going to do that um but most slots on your motherboard are either um <clears throat> the lower tier is pcs2 uh, times one yeah um but that's because i think it doesn't it, with not having an mvme drive it doesn't need the pci express lens so i think that's probably why um but uh, yeah regarding the ebay ebay pulled um the pre-orders for people that are scalping they said you're not allowed to do that because you do not have any of the product in stock it's a pre-order so they've pulled it uh so if you see anybody trying to scalp them on ebay naughty 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 not allowed not allowed not allowed right quick slap and then we'll move on I'll just finish that off. And I've got another drink lined up here. I just need to move it out of the way. Because I will tend to knock it over. And that's not a good thing. Right. I know you people are waiting for this. Because I'm just going to find... We're coming up next. We're coming up next. We can't wait. We're coming up next. We're going to be... <clears throat> going to get rid of that. We're going to get rid of that. And then we're going to bring up name of the game. 
There we go, here we go. Name the game. Yeah, we're going to run. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's favourite part of this. <laughs> that says we can't do it yet. He's in the middle of an AFT raid. <laughs> well, you shouldn't be playing Escape from Tarkov. You should be. Do you know, I should be all teachery here and she'd be saying, you should be paying attention. Crackdown 3. <laughs> People are going to be like, Crackdown 3. Crackdown 3. <laughs> Trust me, it's not Crackdown. Right. As I said at the start, there's two. We're doing two now. We're doing name the game and then name the something else. I'll tell you what that is in a second. But our usual one is obviously name the game. If you've never seen it before. Uh, <clears throat> okay, I'm... Uh, <laughs> Okay, I'm lying. Uh, I'm lying in a in a bus. A bus. <laughs> okay, I'm lying in a bush. <laughs> He's just hiding in a bush. Is that literally in real life, Nappy? That you're just stalking somebody? Or <laughs> Lee? Where? Oh, so, see, it's like Westwood. See, I'd have to I'd have to say that you got that wrong. It, Westwood. Yeah, not not Westwoods. You know, see, I, I've got to be technical on this one. Right, so I'm going to reveal an image. It is blurred to hell, or it should be, as long as I've said it right. Otherwise, I'm going to be revealing it straight away. Boom! Yeah, what's that? Now, I, I, as I stipulated last week, I've got to have the exact title. The exact title. So, if there's various versions of a game, like we had last week, Crackdown 3, I needed Crackdown 3. There was no point you telling me Crackdown 1 or Crackdown 2. That's not the correct answer. Crackdown 3 was the correct answer. So, just to stipulate. Now, I think these are going to be very easy this week name the game i think is going to be an easy one and also i think the new one's going to be an easy one um but we shall see we shall see so i'm going to reset the timer uh, to a minute i am going to reveal the image and i hope to fuck i left it blurred otherwise this is going to be a bit of <laughs> a bit of a letdown i'll be like whoop get rid of that you lead dangerous see you're trying to get him in so <clears throat> if you get it within the first 60 seconds i will give you 5,000 geek coins if nobody gets it I'm going to drop it down to 2,000 geek coins in the next 60 seconds. And then into the third one, which if you don't get it, I'm going to be surprised by then, is 1,000 geek coins, which I'll add to your account. If it comes where it's totally de-blurred and nobody gets it, or somebody does get it, you're not going to get any geek coins because it's, the image is just sat there right in front of you. But I have said, uh, it is. I, have, I do honestly think this is going to be easy. I really do. So we're going to refresh the timer and then we are going to reveal the game. So, you got one minute. Let's see how we do on this one. There we go. <clears throat> I'm telling you, I think this is very easy. And I made it, it, it very easy. As for... Yeah, okay. The, 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 games, the name of the games are flying through. Uh, bad rats. Need for Speed, Forza 4, Gran Turismo 5, Drift. Do we have a winner? And that is Charvel. Well done, Charvel. That is indeed the original Gran Turismo. So I'm just going to um, <coughs> stop the timer, get rid of that. It is actually the original Gran Turismo. Let's just get rid of that. Whoop. Hang on. Go away. There we go. I'm going to de-blur the image now. Uh, no, I'm not because I can't get the image. Where's the image? There we are. There's the image. So yeah, I'm going to de-blur it. But yeah, see, I told you it was easy, but yeah, that was, that was, and the problem was, I was trying to spell Gran Tur Turismo. <laughs> I messed it up, yeah, Gran Turismo. But yeah, it literally, as I de-blur it, I thought it was so easy, but that is how pixelated it was. But Gran Turismo on the original PlayStation, I spent hundreds of hours playing that game. And I even played it in a spell check nightmare, exactly. Gran Turismo. Uh, but yeah, Pan Panon, you were very close as well, but that is the original one. Now, I actually played an uh, amazing game. It was indeed. Um, I actually played that on my original PlayStation. I had my PlayStation chipped <clears throat> to play copies. Uh, <laughs> well, that was not worth Thanks a lot. <laughs> oh, wait, don't forget, Napa. There's another one coming up. There's another one coming up. Um... Now that, I played the US version because, um, and I paid 20 quid for a copy. Um, but because my uh, my TV that I used to play it on wouldn't run at 60 hertz, it played in black and white. It didn't have any color. So for about two years, I played Gran Turismo on PlayStation in black and white. 
in, well, basically grayscale. There was no color. So I didn't know what color the cars were. I had no idea. I literally just played it in black and white. So the, the tarmac looked great because that was the right color. <laughs> but the cars didn't have a clue. Didn't have a clue. But a fantastic game. Uh, obviously, it looks so dated now. But you got to remember, this came out in about 98, I think it was. Yeah, about uh, 1998, I believe it came out. Uh, <clears throat> What was, the, what was the blitz like? <laughs> During the war. Uh, but So, yeah. Right. So, we're going to get rid of that one. Actually, I'm just going to bring it back and just to, just to prove. Uh, <laughs> left for Dead. <laughs> that hasn't saved. I did change that. It's not Left for Dead. Honesty. Honesty. Right. So, this one is not... Name the game. <laughs> yeah oh yeah the classic line yeah for those of you who are watching in black and white the pink is next to the green absolute classic yeah absolute classic uh right so now this one isn't name the game it is named that something else and for some reason that hasn't changed how rude how rude let me just alter that name there do, do, do. i'm gonna tell you what it is i should have set this up it is name the movie. Mm. So I'm going to show you a blurred image from a movie. Ah, yeah, Megalo. That's the, well, because like I say, I was <coughs> EU stroke US. I was playing the US version, so I was right on the 98. Mary Poppins. <laughs> See, everybody fucking stars this shit, don't they? So it's going to be a blurred image. We are going to bring the timer back in. Again, same rules apply. If you get it within the first uh, minute, actually, I do need to just remember Shavel does need 5,000 geek coins. So I'm just going to make a note of that uh, on my document. <clears throat> so we'll do that. Shavel <clears throat> so 5k. Right. So. We're going to refresh this and we're going to show the name of the movie image. So, are you ready? Let's go. Sorry, magic mic. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's a toughie. Great Scott. Blimey, original. Fuck it out the gate, my friend. Wow. The Wolf of Wall Street, indeed, is the correct answer. And just to prove... See, left for dead. <laughs> I don't know why he's done that. It is indeed the Wolf of Wall Street. Wow. Yeah, so I'm going to de-blur that image now. That, uh, wow. Well, so that was... I told you they were easy, but I didn't think you were going to get them that quick. Uh, right, so let's de-blur it all the way down. And there it is. That is Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, as the Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, but that was quick. I did say they were easy. And like I said, I'm just trying to um, make it. <laughs> Why did it say Left 4 Dead? Megalo, it's because I have an answer that reveals underneath. Um, and it hasn't saved for whatever reason. I did change it so that I reveal the answer so that people uh, will know what the actual proper answer to the quiz actually is. But it hasn't saved properly. Uh, the Wolf of Wall Street. It's basically, it's about a guy and I can't, Don Bella something or other, I can't remember. He basically lost a shit ton of money, but then he kind of worked his way up by cheating, um, you know, his way through. And he lost friends. He didn't really give a shit, but it was all about the money. It was all about the money. He's actually a real guy. He's actually a real guy. Yeah. Jordan Belfort. I knew he was judging somebody. I don't know what I get. <laughs> <laughs> Stock exchange. Yeah, he, that's why he's, he's named the Wolf of Wall Street uh, because obviously uh, he pretty much stocks and shares and he was just all about the money. But yeah, uh, infamously throwing stupid amounts of money in parties and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, so I told you they were easy and I knew they were, but um, next week um, I'm going to make them a damn sight harder. So, uh, <clears throat> so yeah, pretty much we're going to have name the game and name the movie. I just need to make sure that I have the text as well for name the movie uh, set up for whatever reason it didn't want to do. But uh, there we go. But uh, yeah, congratulations again uh, to obviously both of uh, 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 to original and to Shadow. Because, oh 
He did a fine job there winning those things. Right. G. A quick slab of the G. There we go. Yeah, it is. Right. Let's get rid of that. Let's. Uh, actually, no, we'll stay on this one. So, moving back to our main screen there. So, there. We've done that. I didn't actually move the thing on, but there you go. Right, come on. Come on. Yep. Right. There we go. Name that. Bloop. There we go. Uh, and we're moving on to the Lotro Legendary Item Revamp. Right. Some of you will have known, uh, anybody that's been following the world of Lord of the Rings online, and obviously I play it quite a lot, <laughs> um, the Legendary Item System is... It's been problematic. Um, so you got me killed. <laughs> Yay. I'm glad about that. Cheers, Deborah. <laughs> um, that pretty much it's a bone of contention with a lot of players, and they've been looking at how to alter it, change it. Uh, <laughs> oh, I couldn't hear the person walking behind me alone, and he's gone. Never mind. Never mind. Is it because when I did the round of applause, Napa? Sorry about that. Maybe we're just doing the round of applause for getting you killed. Um, but yeah, the, the Legendary Item system is going through a revamp. Um, like I say, it's been a bit of an issue for a lot of players for a long time just because of the grind involved. And um, they have what's called the Palantir server, which is a private test server where they put in a lot of the content, a lot of the features, etc. of the game where... <laughs> <laughs> you just got me an easy EFT kill. I saw some plebs standing on a bridge not moving, didn't hear everything. Boom. <laughs> yeah, dear, yeah, God, yeah. Um, so, pretty much, the, the, the Palantir server has people on there that are obviously private beta testing, etc. Now, one of those said people has done a very naughty thing. And they leaked uh, a couple of things. One of which was um, the details of said changes uh and like i say this is up in the area isn't set in stone but it is one of the changes what i'm just going to do is i'm just going to get rid of that and then bring that up <clears throat> so this um essentially is how things are looking with regards the legendary system uh with the changes going forward um it does look a little bit confusing it's just how someone's kind of broken it down now there is a uh, link on our forums as well uh keep you put it up um but it's linked to i'm just going to grab the link to a screenshot of a post by vastin who's one of the devs and obviously he's done a lot of work with regards uh the legendary system and he put a very big long for forum post on it. it's a big screenshot that they've taken <laughs> read it at your own leisure there's a lot to divulge uh and take in uh, in there so have a look at that uh, with the changes <clears throat> but the base legendary item system obviously as it looks at now with that over there um it's going to change to almost like a socketed system um it seemingly is going to grow uh with you uh you're gonna seemingly change the level of it as necessary um going forward so you're gonna get slot types which is a legacy slot in the description so you're gonna get a max one of heraldic legacy slot with a uh, core stat and a weapon damage type one or more of a class legacy uh, legacy slot with a, a secondary stat and a skill attached to it with the difference of a cooldown and then you get one or more ancient legacy slot which is a skill roll bonus and secondary slot <coughs> uh, as you can see this the, the looks like there's five uh relic slots over on the right hand side uh the, each relic slot has relic slot clot right i'm trying to be english relic slot uh, they give secondary stat bonuses uh with rarer relics giving a bonus if the same set uh think dps defense etc there's no striking or enhancement versions now some of us the other the, the latest um <coughs> things for um gear and that has been striking runes etc and that which has been mean it's mogul stuff but seems like they're moving away from that now the detailed information on the left hand side about the allies this is where you're trying to get your head around but it, it does tie in with what vastin has posted um as well again this is something that shouldn't have been posted we can't really you know uh, thank the person for doing it because let's be fair they, they've been put in a privileged position of being on a test server you know a private test server they shouldn't be leaking shit like that 
Now, I know it's a big deal. I know it's a big change to the game, but then don't all of a sudden abuse that trust and go out there and go, aha, this is what they're going to do. Oh, I'm going to cause a, a furore over the game. Let it, let them talk about it. Let them discuss it. Test it. See if it works. Because I'll guarantee that they haven't even tried this system yet. And then they're just saying, oh, this is what's going to happen because it's just caused, like I say, a bit of uproar uh, without knowing the true facts. It's like, you know, saying, oh, that bread's made with white flour and it's supposed to be brown flour and it's like well just try the white flour and see what you think oh i don't like it why oh, only like brown flour you know let's just see what it's like first but the highest level legacy or relic that can be used will determined will be determined by the level the legendary items current level uh level band of the sorcery wars or enchantment room um, um <clears throat> exactly palantir will probably change and they say they've got to stick it on a server somewhere to test it and see how it plays out um but as we know bull roarer gives it uh what the fuck are you on about flour he's what i'm basically saying he's not giving something a chance you might you might i only like white bread <clears throat> so you use white flour you know but i like brown bread so i like brown flour well try the white bread you haven't tried it yet but i only have brown you know that kind of thing you know people's mindset it's what people have uh mindsets it's like I have only, you know, they get set in the ways about certain things. So most people haven't tried this yet. Most people are up in arms about it. Don't know how they can be yet. So uh, all legend items get a bonus to DPS uh, at the average level of the legacy relic. Each reach the level uh, itself up to 20%. <laughs> See, I, I don't know who has actually written this, but I get a funny feeling they're not natively English either. Uh, enhancement runes work like all crystal scroll but more common multi-use okay that's good uh, level each legacy relic uh, no unlock plus xp 130 rune on increase or 24 3 4 4 depending on rarity okay so you the different runes uh, <clears throat> and we're not getting back onto them again are we <laughs> uh, an item xp will advance the seasonal uh, legacy legendary item reward track with the most common rewards being enhancement rooms reset a base uh ally level increases again it's going to be a little uh confusing uh with all this because it does tie into the things that uh, vastin has posted uh, but as always you've got to try it you've got to see it now the current state of affairs with the legendary system i think is in a shocking state i really do uh the grind is unbelievable for uh leveling up the highest tiers so um i think it looks into it might give jewelers and scholars more useful though scholars have a lot of use already but i'm not sure about long-term life of it and that's the worrying part also it doesn't say in fasting post how they intend to swap over to the new system no but again they have to they have to look at a base system and see how they can then integrate it across you know they they, they have to look at how they're going to change something and say right our aim is to do this can we do it with this and then worry about the existing part now to, to be honest with you <clears throat> they are looking at trying to bring this in with gundabad now gundabad is due in about three or four months um and i'd be a little bit worried that there's too much going on and i've said this before there's gonna be too much happening too many uh, variables for things to go wrong um <clears throat> As <laughs> someone that has literal, has literal hours invested in the ally system, I approve of this change. <laughs> yeah, um, I think they're, they're just got to be very careful of how they approach this, but the change has to happen. I know original, obviously, I said to you yesterday on, on stream that you've literally just come to this uh, part and yeah, it's improved your game because obviously all of a sudden you realise you're hitting the things a lot harder. However... Um, the grind is kind of real once uh, definitely once you get to imbuement stage which is level 100 um and by then i mean it's taking you god knows how many years to get to level 50 so i wouldn't worry about it too much uh, just enjoy the game for what it is but uh, as i said you need to look at these whole changes um, for the fresh pair of eyes the tying in a lot of things with uh, possibly new monetization uh, they said they don't like the way that the monetization is in the game none of them like it that's one of the things that they really want to change as well so um i can imagine that uh there's going to be ways to enhance and speed through the new system how they swap over to the new system with existing weapons because they have said that they don't want to just eradicate those totally i don't know i really don't know but we've got to see what they do um keep you there touched on uh weapon swapping now it is a problem in the game 
uh, and the devs even in the post said that it's kind of fucking up the content um the nuances of what one weapon can give you and then all of a sudden you're getting that buff and then you switch to a different weapon and then you've still got that existing buff from that existing weapon or from the old weapon still active and you're thinking well that can't be right we don't want you to do that and i totally agree with that yet there's people out there saying oh i i, I always weapon swap and this is how i do it this is because i i'm a top end raider and shit like that that's fine fair enough but if it's causing and i did say this uh previously if it's causing problems where the content is getting pulled apart because people can see an advantage by having several weapons on the go that give you access to uh, a certain skill or give you access to a certain buff which you shouldn't have then you can see why they're having to make all these tier one tier two tier three and even like tier five if, if you can only achieve tier five by being able to weapon swap then there's something wrong there because you're basically saying you have to know how to do this mechanic you have to have a legendary that has this on it could be a shit one it doesn't really matter as long as you've got the uh the actual skill or the buff on it but some people don't want to do that really don't uh under the current system i've struck hundreds of pounds into allies across multiple cameras i think the minimum monetization here will be making new era is more compulsory to buy but we just seem to be allowing free methods to do it from what i could have read yeah we've just got to wait and see i mean they've been very open and especially the um Reninia, the the new um producer have said uh quite openly that nobody likes the monetization that's in there we, you know we've got they've got too many blockers they've got too many uh points where they reach uh in the game and they're like oh i can't do that then can i oh, I can't, oh i've got to pay for that i've got to pay for this so yeah well, there's gonna be changes um overall i am worried how they're gonna do it all i i really think they're gonna be spinning too many plates when it comes to gundabad like i said they're gonna have the brawler class coming out they're gonna be having the legendary item changes they're gonna have the balance and the increase with um gundabad expansion itself then you've got the changes to the cappy that are probably going to be nerfed a little bit more um than the tweaks and the buffs to the other classes etc who knows? Who knows? And then, it, obviously, if you throw into the mix of PvMP, player versus multi, uh, uh, monster player, uh, they need to balance that as well. Uh, so there's 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 <laughs> there's so many things, and I think they'll get it wrong in some shape or form. Um, for me, yet yeah, the brawler will come, Gundabad will come, and the legendary. Everything else, you know, just hold off ch too many different changes. The ally needs to come in. I do think they do. And it's one thing I'm really looking forward to seeing the difference. Because if they can alleviate the grind for everyone, superb. Um, how they do that and how they don't make it into a, a money sink, I'm not entirely sure. But um, it's something that we're going to be keeping a very close eye on because obviously the game is very close to my heart. I have played it quite a significant amount. Um, but like I say, the, the biggest outcry that I've read on the forums, and I don't go to forums too often, I don't do the Discord too often as well, because usually it's the whingy people or the fanboys uh, that are there. You don't often get balanced um, adults <laughs> on, a, on a forum. They're usually like, why isn't this done? Why isn't that done? Oh, yeah, you're great, that kind of thing. Either you get the, the, you get the suck-ups or the fuck-offs. Um, <clears throat> That kind of thing. So, uh, Lyron also bring back an old system on top of it all. Yes, they have said that um, that they're bringing back an old system that's been um, kind of used before, but we don't know what. They've not mentioned it. So, like I say, hopefully it's not something that's going to mean uh, another plate being spun around. So we'll see. We'll see anyway. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the LI revamp. More details. Like I say, we've got. Uh, I posted the link there, and also it's on our forums if you want to have a look at it as well. And obviously that image there was um, just something that kind of shows it. it's a little bit broken English um, and a bit hard to understand. But if you read the forum post as well, it kind of ties in. But like I said, and just to reiterate, whoever it is that released this information um, <clears throat> needs a kick up the ass and realizing they shouldn't have done that. It's a private test server and that's what it stays that way. Um, and the thing is, that it's, it's how they prove who it's come from, those details um but there you go not to worry anyway right we'll get rid of that let's bring back up a z list and then we'll move on to item number six on the list which is more battlefield 2042 stuffs indeed 
So, um, more details of this have just come uh, basically in the last week. I know we've got the EA Play in about three or four days' time, which is going to reveal even more information, so do expect some more Battlefield 2042 uh, details. I know some people don't like FPS, but I've always told you um, it's my um, go-to uh, from many years of competitive gaming in the, back in the early 2000s. So, what has come about this week? Uh, the biggie really has been that crossplay is confirmed so if you play on an xbox series x on a ps5 or a pc you can play against each other um it's entirely up to you there is an opt-out so if you want to opt out of playing against pc from a console you can if you want to opt out playing against consoles from a pc you can um consoles are going to play consoles it doesn't matter because obviously there's such a lockdown system um but you, you're going to be able to block off PC players and you're going to be able to block off uh, console players if you so wish. Um, the caveat with all that is that the older generation of consoles, the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, <coughs> that um, tier, they're only going to be able to play against each other. They're not going to be able to play um, uh, with the PS5, the Xbox Series X or PC simply because of the game size. We know that obviously on PC, Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5, they're going to be playing on the 128 player servers. The older hardware can't cope with that. They've never been able to cope with that. Um, hence why this is the new generation that's uh, allowed them to basically be on the same level as PC. Um, so that's not going to be happening. Tying in with that though is cross progression and unlocks. Um, absolutely keep it. That's, that's, the main reason why they've done it the the xbox one uh series x and etc they, they just can't compete with each other they're too different now uh <clears throat> there's not been anything i've not seen anything however it is a requested feature um so but like i said the 22nd they're going to be revealing more things so whether that comes about or not uh we're not entirely sure um but yeah, just to say cross possession and uh, cross possession progression rather and unlocks is a thing. So if you have the game on a console like a PlayStation 5 and you have it on PC, for example, you have friends that have consoles, so you play with them sometime and you have a PC guys that you play with as well. Anything you do in the game on either version will be unlocked on the other. So if you unlock a specific gun or you get a certain badge or you buy content on the Xbox Series X, it will then be available on your PC version as well, which I think is a good thing because otherwise people, it just gets too fractured because you then straight away down the middle, you divide the thing, say, well, I only play on Xbox. I can play against PC. And then two months, you know, six months down the line, there's Christmas coming up or something like that. Someone buys you a PC and you're like, oh, I'd really like to be able to play um, Battlefield 2042. Uh, oh, I've got to start from the beginning. But now you don't. You can basically have everything that you've unlocked tied to your account. Boom, there you go. Cross progression, uh, which I think is actually a very good thing. Uh, and I'm actually surprised that EA actually allowed that, to be fair. <laughs> I was thinking, hmm, knowing EA, they'd want you to say, no, you can buy another fucking game. And now you can buy that DLC as well. You want an unlock? Fuck you. You're only getting it on that platform. That kind of thing. That's a kind of EA for you uh, in a nutshell. Um, there was going to be... Um, yeah, so cross progression is great simply because of being able to guest in at a friend's house and then go back to your normal account in the meantime. Exactly, yeah. So if you, like, say, if you put, if you take your console to somewhere or a PC for a LAN party kind of thing, and somebody plays, you know, oh, I've got these Xbox Series X person. Yeah, I've gone there. You know, see what it's like on the PC. Then they know what they've got. They're in their kind of safe space in in, in regards to uh, what they play, but they might be just on a different uh, set of hardware. So. Um, there was a technical playtest due um, around this time, but they've actually delayed it because of um, certain features that they brought in, such as obviously the crossplay, the unlocks, etc. I think they wanted to put a bit more time into that, um, and then just uh, they're going to delay it. I believe it's it's now aimed at sometime in August. Is the technical playtest, which is a private invite. Um, <clears throat> do we have any, any topic on tomorrow's? Oh, do we have any topic on tomorrow's beta? uh you well there's a lot of games coming up tomorrow uh, do, do you mean new world uh yeah i'm holding off on that because um i want to see what um how it plays with the launch and everything because it's in advance i tend to look at what's happened in the previous week because i write it over the weekend 
and then I'll, I'll probably throw it in for next week's and see how that plus as well it gives us a chance to play but just to T touch on that just uh, obviously keith has mentioned it uh new world which is the amazon mmo goes into closed beta uh <clears throat> noah's travel uh like i say i'll upload it onto tube of view so you can you can see the end of it anyway um yeah the new world beta close closed beta starts tomorrow so if you've pre-ordered you should have access to it uh probably need to download uh, an update on the client i might not to might not need to because i've got mine fairly updated uh, but we'll see we'll have a look at that so that's probably something we're going to look at for next week anyway uh just to go back to bf 2042 uh multiplayer um you're gonna have bots yes you are gonna have bots <laughs> uh, ai soldiers uh, are gonna be in the game um now they've been testing these since battlefield one um and they seemingly they've got them in a very very good place um okay they won't be as you know brilliant as a, an actual player they might be a bit more stupid etc uh but they're going to be used for basically server filling uh <laughs> you <laughs> my religious heretics will rise to subdue all you heathens well we know which one he's going in don't we yeah yeah um but when a server is say 120 out of 128 they're going to fill up the other eight slots with bots for example um i think initially the servers are going to be rammed with players there aren't going to be many bots um but it's just to allow for matchmaking to happen uh and then as players try to join that server it might actually say in the server browser list um <clears throat> that pretty much um you might see 128 players but it might have in brackets how many of those are bots so you might realize there's 120 players of actual real people so if you join that bot gets booted as players leave uh <laughs> more stupid than the average player yeah <laughs> i think i think you know what i mean there tom i think you know what i mean um they so the, the, they will backfill but they'll also get booted very quickly so it's not like you're gonna need to make room uh <clears throat> that was like titanfall one and two and no one cared and loved the games yeah i i think it's gonna be a good thing now i know keep you just said about turning bots on and off in battlefield uh <clears throat> they that you're not really you're not going to be able to turn them off for multiplayer this is the thing if you want to play um co-op yeah with a friend or whatever then you can have them um against ai if you want to play solo and you want to put in the, the this is their phrase and if you want to perfect your skills for multiplayer you can even play alone against ai soldiers which you know i think he's handy for you know some people have never you got to remember not everybody's played um battlefield before not everybody's good at fps games i mean for example i, I could set up a, a solo thing for magic to have a go at and she's playing against bots yeah they might be a bit dense and i'm not on about magic here <laughs> um the, the bots might be a bit dense and you know they might not do everything they won't call in um they won't take over like tanks or anything like that but <laughs> But they will do, you know, they will hel give health to each other. They will, you know, try and shoot you, etc. That kind of thing. So th they've got some... And I'm actually quite interested to see how well they've done on the AI. Uh, um, but the, 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 we, we all know the fun part is going to be the, the multiplayer, the FPS. Uh, Lyron, um, did they announce what game modes are coming? I guess Conquest and Rush will be there. Well, they've got what's called uh, Conquest and Breakthrough. They are going to be the big, big games. They are going to be uh, 128 player. They are going to be very sectional. What, that's sectional, not sexual. Sex, C S E C T, just, yeah, you know, sectional uh, when it comes to capture points. So you're going to have to hold certain areas, uh, etc. Um, so. But like I said, more is going to be revealed. I expect there's going to be a proper gameplay uh, show on the uh, EA Play on the 22nd uh, this month. But that's what they've said. There's another game mode that they um, uh, haven't revealed, which they're going to reveal. So they haven't said what it's going to be. Uh, they said it. it's not Battle Royale. So you, you can pretty much do... Uh, just broke a million on EFT. Got one on my level, you noobs. <laughs> well done. Well done. Oh, million for million for Napa there. Um, uh, da, 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 da. So just to actually uh, 
key Pete, just to answer yours and it's something i did put at the bottom conquest and breakthrough which i said are the two largest game modes that are going to be you cannot opt out of ai soldiers which are used to backfill servers they are going to be capped to the amount that will come in so you can't have a 60 players 60 real world players and then all of a sudden you've got like uh 68 ai they're not going to have that many there might be let's say 20 ai or something like that to make it look like there's 80 players on the server you know that kind of thing but you cannot opt out that was the one thing they definitely say in the larger game modes you cannot opt out of ai it's just for the, the, the keeping the servers a bit fuller than they necessarily than they necessarily are uh, the other game modes that they're going to have uh, which I'm, i don't actually know for definite what they're going to be it's seemingly like there is going to be an ai switch so uh, you can turn them on or off um but yeah definitely going to be ea play on july the 22nd which is thursday is it thursday 22nd it's thursday and it's on the 19th of the day yeah that's the day we're out as well <laughs> yeah um so we'll have to check on that one um but that is pretty much it for this week so we've got obviously the new elgato products which is the face cam the mic arm and the wave xlr we've talked about well actually just you know quickly whiz through that again um war thunder classified leaks what a dude what a dude whoever he is needs his head examining well done that man uh we've got the valve steam deck which it's it's a bit there is it going to be good is it not going to be good we'll we'll find out quarter two uh 2022 uh we've got name obviously we did name there but whatever which uh shabal won in 5k and obviously original one uh, with that so we'll have to give them the points for that uh yeah people say that live and about the steam machines now to be fair uh, i think they were too similar um to um a normal pc what why why lock yourself down to that now you could say well, well this is only a handheld version of a steam machine yeah, but the the ability to play a steam game on a handheld was not what the steam machines were about i actually think they're going to do better than the steam machines i just think with the the dock and then being able to hook up to a, a, an external monitor uh, and then you'd be able to play it in bed kind of thing whatever you want to do um i think it's going to be have more promise and the pre-order numbers do seem very good from from what i've seen of uh, various posts etc so I, i'm holding out that it's going to be better than the steam machine and i think with the amount of pc players in the world um and it's not tied in you've got to remember it's not tied into one infrastructure it's not tied into like nintendo you can only play nintendo it's not like the uh, vita from uh, sony etc you had to buy the cartridges for the sony vita version if you've got a game on steam that you might have played you know years ago never played you think ah fuck it i'm gonna play stardew valley on on my handheld you can do certain games are going to lend themselves to um a steam deck a lot better and i think that is um where the, the the actual doozy of the whole thing is going to be i think that's going to be the the peak of it i'm not saying something like warzone uh, or anything like that i think pc play for that or you know if you want to play it on the xbox series x etc then that that'll suit better but uh, certain games will be absolutely fantastic on there and you think how many thousands upon thousands of games there are not only in your own steam library because i know some some people have got thousands i've got lots uh, that i've never played and it'd be just a oh do you know what? i'm going to download and put that on and see what it's like oh i don't like that <laughs> get rid um you know you can try all these different things so it's a lot more promise uh i'm not trying to hype it up just because i pre-ordered one or anything like that um i, I do genuinely think it's going to be a good thing i really do um we shall see uh, obviously we had a little look at uh the lotro legacy uh legendary system which is seemingly um causing issues across the board for some people but i think we need to give it a chance and see what happens and then last but not least obviously we just went through the battlefield 2042 details um but look out for the ea play on the 22nd as well uh, there's a few different beaters coming up as well uh obviously new world starts tomorrow on the 20th um i've just been issued a key for a game called lemnis gate now if you've not heard of it it's been published by frontier who obviously publish um elite dangerous it's a tactical turn-based first person shooter to get your head around it is quite bonkers um but have a look out for it there is videos uh, up on youtube as well so pretty much you do uh you have like 60 seconds you do your whole fps thing then your play your opposition has their turn they 
then have seen what you've done so they can then counteract that they might know where you are so they will shoot you they might then do something else but all the time you're watching what they're doing so you could then change what you did in the first instance and you play so many rounds until you kind of uh sort of fancy it a little bit but it's it's in first person shooter it's not like movie character to this square get them to fire kind of thing you literally do it in the first person running around as a first person shooter and then it stops and then it changes so <clears throat> have a look at it it's a bit of a it, it, i'll use this term lightly it's a bit of a mind fuck getting your head around it you know because it's like how does that work great concept um seems very fun to play i've got a, a, a beta key for that so we'll see i do need to check the uh, the ndna on that um the uh, nda on it rather ndna uh, and see if it's um uh, if i'm able to stream it at any point but um yeah you play against either one or two other people so you can have three people going off at once and that's <clears throat> hard to get your head around so um as always we've got an output going video that um i'm gonna have a look at uh and i'm gonna bid you adieu and hopefully uh, you've enjoyed it thank you very much for hanging around it's good to see the numbers are starting to grow a little bit maybe people are realizing that don't talk shit all the time just some of the time i just talk shit about other things as well as lotra um so bloody hell, it's 20 past nine already 20 past nine where's the time gone um <clears throat> right so i'm gonna play you uh, a game that uh you might interest in. it's just something i found bit of an oddity uh, and we shall see you probably tomorrow. Um, hope you can join us. Um, if not, uh, to be good. And I shall see you soon. Right. Gameplay. Here it goes. I'm not